Now, here on my movie, Ola, I have a film that reenacts the story of Emil Renault and his remarkable theater optique. Renault was a painter of lantern slides who lived in a small apartment in Paris in the year 1877. He was intrigued with the early animation devices. He studied and read all he could about them in the scientific periodicals of his day. Finally, he invented a machine of his own called the Praxinoscope, which borrowed the interchangeable action strips from the zoetrope. But he replaced the slits on the zoetrope with mirrors set edge to edge around a revolving center. Each individual picture on the outer rim is reflected on one of the mirrors. And here, with the charm that still enchants and delights us today, the images glide and flow along with a mysterious life of their own. Still, Renault wasn't satisfied. Soon he hit upon the idea of drawing his pictures on strips of black paper. This enabled him to combine a background on a separate card with the action drawing. The complete effect was viewed through a tiny proscenium. He called his improved machine the Theater Praxinoscope. Here one could see a vaudeville show in miniature. Just a simple change of scenery, a new cast of characters, and a brand new act is ready to start. It doesn't matter that the entire performance lasts only a few seconds or that the strip is made up of only 12 poses. It still keeps you spellbound. You want to see it again and again. But to Reno's mind, this still left much to be desired. He wanted something better and bigger. At last, he had it. The short picture strips had been expanded to a long band containing 500 hand-painted slides drawn on transparent gelatin. Small holes punched between each image foreshadowed the perforations on modern film. Each hole meshes into the teeth of the large wheel, rotating at the same speed as the 36 mirrors at the center. Each individual image is lighted up separately. By an interplay of mirrors and lenses, the ray of light is reflected back to a mobile mirror, which in turn projects the enlarged image onto a screen. By adapting the principle of the magic lantern to his machine, he was able to project the background onto the same screen. Here, his actors were life-size. Here, he could almost create the illusion of reality. From a toy in the home, his idea had grown into a form of public entertainment. Renault called it the Theater Optique. Here the people of Paris could view a complete quarter of an hour performance. In the course of his career as a showman, he produced seven different shows, all accompanied by appropriate mood music. For more than 10 years, Renault worked here behind the screen that separated the audience from his primitive projection booth. And in this period, he played to over a half million delighted patrons.
safe to assume that not many of his viewers ever gave a thought to the vast amount of effort that lay behind what they were seeing. And it is quite probable that not even Reno himself had the slightest inkling of the heights toward which his first true prototype of the animated cartoon was pointing the way. <laughs> 